So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, to the organizers of this amazing conference for having or allowing me to present um, my paper, which is called Algorithms as Subordination. Um, and this is part of a research project um, called um, Labor Algorithm, which is to analyze the impact of algorithms in the labor relationship. Um, so, I'd like to start my presentation with this quote by uh, Lucas Biewald. Uh, founder of Crowdflower, maybe you already know it, um, but it says, before the internet, it would be really difficult to find someone, sit them down for 10 minutes, and get them to work for you, uh, and then fire them after those 10 minutes. But with technology, you can actually find them, pay them a tiny amount of money, and then get rid of them when you don't need them anymore. So this quote um, is actually unpleasantly accurate of how platform uh, works, uh, how digital platforms they work. Um, they treat workers as a commodity, as an endless source of labor, um, like if opening a tap, uh, like if it were opening a tap, as you can see illustrated here in this cover of The, the Economist. But I also like the quote um, because it shows the importance of technology, because without internet, without technology, this would not be possible. Okay. Um, so very briefly, although this is very common, or, or there, this is is very known for everyone, but how is this singular business model based on? Essentially for key elements. First is the division of tasks or services in micro tasks, so very individual short term, uh, term task. Second, each and every one of these tasks is outsourced to a very large number of workers. And it has to be very large so as the so that, that the platform can have enough supply to cover demand that there is at all times in the platform. So if I wake up at 3 a.m. and I want some ice cream, there has to be someone connected at the platform to cover my demand, okay? And this is why the, the, the new term of crowdsourcing, because it's outsourcing to a large crowd of workers. Then the third element of this business model is hiring on demand. So basically, um, workers are hired at the precise moment when there's the petition for a service. And this is, again, thanks to technology, because new gen generation technology allows us to determine the exact and precise moment where a service um, is requested. And with the use of an algorithm, in a question of seconds, this uh, service, this request, can be assigned to a person uh, willing to carry it, it out. And finally, this business model is based on um, independent contractors. So instead of providing the service internally, they have outsourced it completely to people that are formally considered independent contractors or self-employed workers. Um, as um, it has been mentioned uh, multiple times throughout the conference, there's a very important uh, legal and social conflict regarding the legal status of platform workers. And we find contradictory decisions in almost any country in the world. So in the United States, in the UK, in France, in Italy, and Spain is, is also the case. You have here listed some of the different decisions in different cities, uh, administrative and judicial decisions, both uh, in both senses. Some declare that there's a labor relationship, others declare that there's a self-employment relationship. Okay? So at first glance, it might seem that platform workers don't fit in the traditional definition of worker. Um, and this is true because technology has introduced new elements of flexibility. So it's not only a question about um, that platform workers use their their means of production, or that they bear the costs of the activity, or that they receive retribution directly proportionate to the number of services they provide. It's that technology has introduced two new elements of flexibility that we didn't have before, okay? Or at least not as um, apparent as, as in platform economy. And first is the freedom to work. So they are free, from a legal perspective, to determine when they work. But not only to determine their schedule, but to determine how many hours they work and if they work at all. And second, the capacity to reject work. So the capacity to decide which services, which requests they take on and which they don't. Okay? 
Additionally, platform, digital platforms have added a new and sophisticated narrative that generates more confusion. So we don't talk about workers anymore, we talk about uh, writers, we don't talk about jobs, we talk about, about gigs, and customers are peers. So this generates a lot of confusion that is allowing platforms to exploit this um, regulatory arbitrage. So to exploit this confusion, this legal confusion generated by this, this new reality. Okay. Um, however, in my opinion, if we look at the characteristics of platforms uh, more in detail, we find other characteristics or other, other elements that, in my opinion, um, um, allows us to consider them as, as workers, as employees. And here we find the role of algorithms, the role of the platform and the app itself, and then the absence of entrepreneur, entrepreneurial opportunities. So let's go with the first one. What is the role of algorithms in the classification of workers uh, in the platform economy? So algorithms, in my opinion, have two very important um, effects. First, they allow us, in my opinion, to differentiate between technological firms and service providers. So um, a lot of digital platforms, what they do is that they argue that they don't provide the service. Rather, they are a technological firm that has developed a software and allows for the free um, connection between users in the platform. So some platforms, they argue that they are mere intermediator, uh, in, they intermediate between uh, supply and demand, okay? However, in my opinion, algorithms, the use of algorithms in matching supply and demand is crucial to determine whether platforms are acting or not as mere technological firms or if they're acting as service providers. So the use of an algorithm to match supply and demand to assign through an algorithm that takes into account different metrics, the use of an algorithm to assign services to different um, workers, in my opinion, that is a clear indication that they are service providers because they are intervening in the service. They're not just allowing free interactions between supply and demand within the platform. They're not just creating a free marketplace because they're intervening in the assignment of these services. And this is a little bit in line with the decision of the ECJ regarding uh, Uber, uh, where it says that the intermediation services provided by Uber was inherently linked to the transportation services. So this use of an algorithm in the intermediation is linked to the service, uh, to the provision of the service. The second, um, the second um, impact that algorithms have is that they are um, act as forms of subordination. So all of the delocation systems that um, um, platform workers use in the app, that generates a massive amount of data that platforms can use. So platforms know exactly where our workers are at all times, uh, how many hours uh, that day, that week, the previous months, the previous six months they have connected to the platform, how many times they connected during high demand hours or high demand periods, how many services did they accept, how many did they reject. So they know, know all about the workers' activity. And all of this information is processed and is integrated in sophisticated sophisticated algorithms to adopt organizational decisions. So it depends on the, t on the platform, so every platform has its own singularities. Um, however, the use of algorithms taking into account the platform's organizational metrics, that's a form of subordination. And it's a form of subordination because, first, it's very effective. It actually is a very effective way to manage and organize the workforce. But, in spite of it being effective or not, it's still a form of organization, and this is typical of the labor relationship. Third, technology is also relevant because the technology used by digital platforms is actually the essential and nuclear um, infrastructure. So platforms, they argue that they 
are not service providers because they don't own the bicycles or cars or computers or phones that workers are using. But this is, in my opinion, irrelevant because the essential infrastructure is not these cars and bikes and phones and computers, but it's the app itself. It's the platform because this is what allows the business model and the business carried out by platforms. And again, this is um, what the ECJ concluded in its decisions, the two decisions regarding Uber. It says the company provides an application without which those drivers would not be led to provide transport services and persons who wish to make an urban journey would not use the services provided by those drivers. So the app is essentially because it was what, it's essential because it is what allows this interaction. And finally, in my opinion, um, the third um, argument to consider workers as employees is the absence of entrepreneurial opportunities. So it is the platform, the one that's adopting all business, economic, and strategic decisions. Workers don't have any capacity to determine conditions, to determine prices, to determine uh, markets, which markets um, the platform is in and which it's not. Commercial contracts with uh, companies, they have no capacity to determine all of this that influences a business. So, uh, oh, sorry, and in, in addition, um, they have the prohibition to pursue any business opportunity that they achieved within the platform. So if within the platform a worker um, establishes contact with a company, it is absolutely prohibited that they continue this relationship outside the platform. Okay? And they are providing services within or under the platform's brand. So besides working more hours, platform workers have no capacity to adopt any decision that influence their supposed business because this is all adopted by the platform. Okay? Additionally, and this is something that uh, Ricard mentioned, um, what is generating um, precarity uh, regarding platform workers, it's not only the definition or the legal status of platform workers, but it's the, on the hiring on demand itself. Platform workers are essentially using the zero hour contract, which by the way is illegal, at least in Spain and in other countries uh, in Europe. Because workers, they don't have any guarantee of working time. They're only hired when there is a demand, and if there is no demand, they're not hired. As a result, their work and their salary is absolutely unpredictable, okay? This is leading to what uh, scholars uh, started to call algorithmic instability because their access to work and hence salary is variable on the algorithm adopted and controlled by the platform which can be changed and it, it actually happens that platforms, they change the algorithm, okay? This leads to an extreme labor instability present because their present salaries depend on this demand and also future because this will affect future pensions, okay? So basically this model implies a shift and it's shifting the risk, the typical business risk to workers. They are the ones bearing the risk of um, absence of demand, of inactivity periods or even malfunctioning. Of the, of the platform, okay? And this re uh, creates a risk of exploitation because workers, they are forced to work very long hours in anti-social um, schedules and in absolutely adverse um, weather conditions to make ends meet. And this is especially true for platform workers because since the business model is based on an oversupply of workers, it means that there is more competition in the platform. So it's, it, it's actually harder to, to access work. So given this scenario, is, there, is it possible to have like a harmony between platforms and workers' interests? Basically, we have four solutions. First solution would be to create the figure of the independent worker. And this has been um, defended by different authors, uh, Harrison Kruger and in Spain, Jesus Mercader Ugina and Salvador del Rey. Um, so it's basically establishing a specific regulation like the one happened in, in France, the one adopted in France, and recognizing them um, some minimum rights, essentially equality, non-discrimination, training, health and safety, uh, and collective bargaining, for example. 
Second solution would be the one defended by Adrián Tolodí, Tolodí, a scholar uh, in Spain, which is to create a special labor relationship. So protect them under the labor relationship, but to have a singular and specific legal regime. The question is, is will this imply recognizing the zero hour contract? And are we willing to do so? The third option has been analyzed by Ricard, and it's to promote, uh, and, for, and by Joanna as well, is to promote workers' um, cooperatives. Um, and this has, platform uh, co-ops have um, increased in the, in the past years. We have in Spain two important examples, the case of Mensacas in Barcelona or uh, La Pajara in, in Madrid. And finally, the last option, um, sometimes qualified as utopian or unrealistic or just not being present in this world is um, to insist that there's a labor relationship and demand platforms to comply with current labor regulation. Um, this has been defended by myself, Valerio De Stefano, Ignacio Beltran, or Jer Jeremiah Prassel. Um, in my opinion, the definition of worker is still valid nowadays and platform work fits within this traditional definition of worker. It's true that there maybe will have to have some specific readjustments, okay? But it's not necessary to adapt the entire labor regulation to a business model that's based specifically on eluding this labor regulation. So in my opinion, the definition of worker is still valid in spite of having to identify new elements of this definition of worker. What are these new elements? The importance of algorithmic management as a form of management proper of the labor relationship, the importance of technology as the infrastructure, and the absence of any entrepreneurial opportunities as also relevant in the definition uh, of worker. Um, platforms, they can create and will create economic, social, and even, even labor benefits. But for us to be able to see all of these benefits and for all of these benefits to be for everyone, um, my opinion is that they have to comply with current regulation, um, tax regulation, labor regulation, and any other type of, of regulation that we have in, in place because it is actually still valid. And I don't think it's an option to adapt it to specific business interests. So thank you very much for your attention.